Welcome to Tech Tips. We have covered all the leaks and news regarding NVIDIA's new GeForce 9 series card lineup, but now that we have them in hand, let's give you a brief overview of what's new and what's awesome about the new Maxwell architecture that's in these two cards. Office 365. Get work done anytime, anywhere, and on any device. In addition to one terabyte of OneDrive storage, also receive 60 Skype World Minutes per month to over 60 countries. Let's start off with a physical tour of this new gen reference cooler. Pretty amazing, isn't it? The first thing you'll notice is the cooler design. This style of cooler was debuted first in April 2012 on the GTX 690. Despite its age, the cooler is one of our favorites here at Tech Tips. It's fairly quiet, has very decent performance, and it looks pretty darn sexy. The blower design is still encased in the brushed magnesium alloy. You're still getting that beautiful window showcasing the cooling fins. And of course, you still got that user customizable LED lit GeForce GTX logo. Over here on the side is one of the only cosmetic changes with this 9 series design. Where there used to be a piece of metal sticking out for the rear I.O., now Nvidia has extended the cooler shroud to cover that as well. When flipping the card over, you'll see this gorgeous backplate. We've seen this design before on the Titan Z or Titan Z. However, Nvidia has made one notable change. There's a small removable spacer. When it's left installed, it allows cards to breathe when they're packed tightly together. If clearance is an issue, simply remove the spacer and you're down to a normal height graphics card. As for inputs and outputs, you've got dual SLI fingers for up to quad SLI support, and of course, the 16x PCIe 3.0 connector. Now, here's where things get a bit different. NVIDIA is actually putting two 6-pin power connectors and, on looking at display options, NVIDIA is really backing DisplayPort. There are three full-size DisplayPort 1.2 connectors, all of which support G-Sync. You're also getting a single HDMI 2.0 port, which finally provides support for 4K 60 frames per second and 21 by 9 ratio monitors. Oh, and they've of course thrown in a single DVI-I dual link port. You can use any combination of these ports for four monitors in a quad display setup. Now over here, we've actually got MSI's twin Frozer 5 cooler design sitting on top of the GTX 970. Theoretically, the 970 also has the same reference cooler as the 980, but all the manufacturers that we've seen have put a custom cooler on their cards. MSI's updated shroud takes some design cues from the Trifrozer Lightning Cooler. The cooler is actually slightly smaller than two slots, so clearance should be no issue for this, not to mention better cooling and SLI setups. MSI has science in mind with this card as the fans don't spin at all when the card is less than 50 degrees Celsius. Additionally, the fans are independently controlled with their hybrid Frozer tech. This fancy marketing term means that the one in the red portion has a fan curve tied to the GPU temperature, while the other ramps up based on the PWM temperatures. The fans have also gotten an overhaul. These new Torx fans allow for 19% more airflow than previous propeller blade designs in the Twin Frozer 4 cooler. The new fans are also 75% stronger and 5% quieter when operating at 100% fan speed. Not bad, MSI. The heat pipes have also been updated. There are now two 8mm and two 6mm nickel plated copper pipes. One of the 8mm pipes is actually a Super SU pipe that runs in an S pattern the full length of the card. Now, while there's no backplate on this model, it's nice to see a matte black PCB from MSI. One welcome convenience feature, MSI has reversed the power connectors. No more fishing your thumb into the cooler to pull back the retention clip. MSI has chosen to give this card 6 and 8 pin power connectors just for that overclocking headroom. Oh, and one more little bit of flair for windowed side panel owners. The MSI logo on the side here is lit by a white LED. And for I.O., again, you've got dual SLI fingers, and on the back, MSI has reverted to a more traditional layout of dual DVI, a single display port, and a single HDMI connector. Okay, so that's it for the physical tour. Let's talk about the Maxwell GM204 GPU architecture that sits at the heart of these two 9 series graphics cards. The first gen Maxwell GM107 chip was released with the 750 and 750 Ti. These cards at the time offered amazing performance per watt. The second generation had faster per core performance than the first gen chips, and despite the lack of a die shrink, this 28 nanometer chip is one of the most efficient flagship GPUs ever. It probably makes the most sense to compare these chips against the Kepler based GTX 780 Ti. The 780 Ti has more CUDA cores, more texture units, more ROPs, and a larger aggregate memory bus. 
So how can this card possibly be a successor? It all comes down to efficiency. Nvidia's major ace up their sleeve is an improved memory compression scheme. The GPU takes 8x8 blocks of 64 pixels and can compress it up to an 8 to 1 ratio. Additionally, the GPU only stores changes to the image information rather than all of the raw data alone. This is analogous to the way H.264 encoding compresses video. Utilizing these two compression tricks, Nvidia claims that the 224 gigabits per second memory bandwidth over the 256-bit interface actually acts more like 300 gigabits per second in real-world usage scenarios. The new architecture is so efficient that the TDP of the 980 is a mere 165 watts, which is why the reference card only draws from two 6-pin connectors. The power sipping means that these two cards should also overclock very nicely for those who want to squeeze every ounce of performance from their hardware. Another feature that NVIDIA is touting is the dynamic super resolution capability which allows you to render your scene at up to four times the resolution and intelligently downsamples the image to fit your monitor's resolution. This is handy for older games that aren't demanding and can make them look much nicer if you got extra graphical horsepower. There's also a few other technologies including voxel global illumination which is a method for approximating global illumination without actually tracing light rays. This is an Unreal Engine 4 supported feature and should make games look beautiful, particularly games where shadows play a large role in setting the scene. The other new tech is MFAA. It's essentially a method for anti-aliasing that provides about 30% more performance for the same image quality. Finally, Nvidia is promising VR Direct, which allows for lower latency tracking for a better VR experience. If you want to learn the nitty gritty details about these new technologies, check the discussion links below. I don't want to bore you guys. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. If you look at this graph right here, you'll see that the 970 is down 3 SMMs on the 980, which reduces the CUDA cores to 1664 instead of the full 2048 on the 980. You'll also notice a slight reduction in clock speeds. The cards are otherwise identical with 4 gigs of GDDR5 clocked at the same speed, the same memory interface, and even the same transistor count. Thanks for watching. We're going to have performance numbers very soon for you guys. We've got a few 970s lined up for SLI sweetness, and we'll bring those numbers. Hopefully, they'll be around the corner. But comment down below and let us know what benchmarks you would like to see us run. And as always, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. We'll see you later.